Uh, next up is uh, Momentum Group, which was quite recently spun off from Aligo. And we have uh, Ulf Lilius, the CEO, with us on Zoom. Please go ahead. Thank Ulf. you. Thank you. Yes, as you mentioned, we are a uh, young company. We were listed 31st of March this year on Nasdaq Stockholm mid cap list. Uh, but we have a long and proven business model and philosophy. We have the roots in a successful business culture that spans for more than 100, and ye 100 years. Uh, myself started at SKF 1996 and joined Bergman and Beving in 2004 uh, when they bought the company I was uh, working at. So in uh, 2012, I took over as CEO for the Bergman and Beving and I made a spin off in 2017. And then I made another spin off in 2022. So we our heritage is from Bergman and Beving, which is uh, today six uh, listed companies, as you know, Adtech and Logicrafts, of course, and, and, and Adlife. So our aim is to be the, the market best partner for a sustainable industry. So our main focus is to work in the industry. Sorry. So we would like to be an active owner that focus on developing and acquire companies within the product and service verticals where we have knowledge, competence and experience. We have a clear growth strategy with the ambition to grow through both acquisitions and the development of our existing businesses. Our strategic direction is to offer sustainable products and services that helps our customer in their everyday operations. And sustainable for us is to offer quality products with long lifetime and low energy consumption. And our value added services is combining our product offering with service maintenance repairs and replacement of product as well as training and specialist expertise. Our financial target is to have an EBITDA growth by 15% and to do so we of course have to increase our sales. If we can grow 15% five years in a row we will double our earnings. In order to do so, we have to finance the expansion. We, were, we therefore have our super efficiency target, which is EBITDA through working capital. It should be larger than 45%. And simple is that we like to pay dividend one third. We also have to pay tax one third, and then we have one third to invest in our business. We're today operating in a decentralized business model where two business areas are components and services. Business area components is a group of companies in industrial components, services and solutions for industry with expertise in industrial improvement, consisting of companies with leading specialist positions in their respective market niches. Business area service is a group of companies in Sweden offering through its services longer lifetime and efficiency of installed machines, new installations and solutions are also offered for digitized maintenance. So a flavor of our products. We are working with bearing and linear products, technical seas, power transmission, electric mechanical components, pneumatics and hydraulics, lubrications and, and so forth. And a flavor of our services is logistic services, administration, uh, training and of course workshop where we have refurbishments of motor pumps and gears. So how do we create long-term profitable growth? Well, in order to grow our group, we have a framework to work by. We call it our mind and soul and heart and soul. The mind and soul is to have a business development in our companies through decentralized responsibility and in each company employee development. We also like to be an active owner uh, and work with our companies and find new opportunities to grow and develop the business, as well as grow through acquisitions. Secondly, we like to work with the heart and soul. To achieve this, we believe it's very strong in decentralized responsibility, as well as the willingness to improve. We call this to be better than yesterday. And to be able to be better than yesterday, we have to work with simplicity. So if we go to our desired position, we have identified a number of product and service verticals where we would like to be present. We have then divided them into three focus area. 
The first focus area is the off-the-market business, where we today combine our value offer with a broad and deep product offering and related services with expertise in industrial improvements. This is the main part of our business, and this was also the, the, the company that I worked for and was acquired by Bayman and Baby in 2004. So here we will focus on to grow, to get more uh, local sales units. Today we have 30 in Sweden and two in Norway. We intend to, to grow in both Norway, Sweden and Finland in this, in this uh, uh, division or, or leg. Then we also work with specialist product verticals. Here we have companies like ETAB in hydraulics, Urbas in pneumatics. And here we're looking for companies with leading specialist position in their respective market niches. So for example, Urbas is, is uh, selling pneumatics for 50 million sec and Momentum Industrial is also selling uh, pneumatics for a, around double of that. But Momentum Industrial is primarily serving the off-the-market business and Urbis is serving the OEM market. So it's, it's logical for us to be present in, in those two uh, customer dimensions. Uh, the third focus area is technical service, where we today have companies that do maintenance service on and off customer sites, uh, as well as digital maintenance. And here we are do refurbishment for pumps, motor and gears, and also generators. And here we have a flavor of companies and uh, Rörik, which we bought in 2008, uh, last year bought uh, Assemblin and their workshop. So we grow that business and, and, and double the size. So critical success factors. Well, of course, if we'd like to grow, we have to be financially strong. Uh, we are financially strong. We have room for acquisition. We have a strong cash flow from operations. And we have a possibility of acquisitions financing through revolving facility of 800 million sec. We also have principal owners who want to grow the group in our desired position as a niche, uh, niche uh, compounder in, in selected product and service vertical, which I mentioned. And we also have a good uh, industrial network, mainly in Sweden, but also in Denmark, Norway, and Finland. Uh, we have proven processes and resources uh, to do acquisitions. And we have a total of around 10 employees who work on acquisitions in various forms in place just to evaluate and implement acquisition as well as improve an onboarding model with decentralized performance and business responsibility. And since the last spin-off I made in 2017, we have uh, acquired 20 companies. And since we were listed in March, we have not acquired uh, yet, but it, it sure will come. And of course, we also have competence in our field at several levels from the board and management, as well as in our companies. Uh, the chairman of the board is Johan Sjö, who was uh, uh, the CEO for Abtech for, I guess, 11 years. So, uh, and bottom line, we're not that complicated. Uh, we acquire, we develop, we build culture, and we believe in that if people grow, business will grow. And that's a short glance of the Momentum Group. So uh, I will let uh, Sinava, uh, you, you can start with, uh, with a question to, to the companies. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the presentations. It's very interesting to get to know you in the very early phases of growth. And I think sort of as a first one, and this goes for both of you, uh, you both founded, you know, serial compounders coming out of seeing how these business models work. And I think it's very interesting to hear, you know, what are your thoughts on how you're going to add or create further value uh, by establishing the companies rather than just investing in them? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it sort of comes uh, natural. Uh, a lot of these um, uh, people, when they interact with similar companies, they they can learn a lot from each other, and uh, uh, we can see that a lot of uh, energy is released and created in this process. And suddenly, they can play with open cards and learn from each other. So, what are your thoughts on the? Um, price hikes at this point or how's your demand situation how do you negotiate with your customers etc there's so much 
um, they can learn from each other. And uh, that is really um, uh, creating results, uh, we believe, because uh, in a lot of situations, these uh, entrepreneurs, they've been sort of alone for 10 or 20 years. They've had their empl employees, but they have, uh, haven't had anyone to really be creative together with, but they can within um, our group. So uh, it, it, I would say it, a lot of it comes natural. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I believe very many companies that we meet or, or entrepreneurs, they are quite alone, as you say. They, they very seldom have a board with professionals. They don't talk to the, the neighbor companies either. They, they, they take your employees or your customers. So actually they are quite quite isolated uh, in, in very many ways. Um, and in, within our group, you have a lot of, you have 11 other CEOs you can talk to, uh, CFO positions and so on, so you can share common knowledge. And also what, what we drive as CFI is, is to get it bottom up, uh, that, that the, C, the CFI team should uh, enable and, and motivate uh, the companies to, to uh, actually interact between each other. Um, so, so um, but of course, we, we ha I come from the PE uh, industry, and, and um, I mean we have targets. Uh, we're setting, investing people, very much in people, and, and uh, plans to grow and, and do it together. And also, so, so I think this combination uh, with group comp co uh, capabilities and, and an uh, owner that is really supporting growth uh, is a very good context um, together, and also that we have a, a financing so you can grow. Often, of the entrepreneur has his his own. Uh, it, the cash in the company is is uh, actually the pocket, his his own pocket, and and I think that's that's uh, that they are. I think that they perhaps not really take those steps that we do. What would we try to do also is professionalize uh, certain processes like ISO certification, ESG, uh, purchasing, long term. Um, also, also invest in, in, in people and, and um, to get a, a structural capital in the company rather than one man show. Uh, and that, uh, I think, of, often, often when we change the CEO, it's, it's you have very good people around, but as, as long as you are, uh, you are the owner, you're the chairman, and also CEO, it's a plug in the system. We bring that up, it's still perhaps in the board, uh, in the company, but then it's, it's uh, the, the power come under from, from the, the team. So I think it's, it's a very good combination. I think we heard from Momentum. I think we share the, so, the same um, uh, experience. Yeah. Do you have anything to add, Ulf? No, uh, I think for us, we have been uh, more uh, selected in product and service verticals. And uh, as they say, uh, I think uh, sometimes it's good to come into a family, but we are like technical nerds. So a lot of the companies we visit like our profile and, and like the way we, we think and do business. So, so I think it's, it's a lot of, a lot of that, but also, of course, uh, as they mentioned, uh, the whole capital is what they have in their own company. So of course, uh, sometimes it's, it's good to secure some of the, 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 the money that they have invested themselves. So, yeah, agree. I think we have to touch upon the uh, component shortage and uh, inflation. Um, how long does it take for you to uh, see the uh, price increases to go down to the PLs? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I think I would say that we, we have a sort of a different situation than perhaps a lot of other sort of maybe similar companies, but we don't have very much raw, raw material uh, um, or components that we buy because we're focusing on uh, services in our uh, group as a whole. So we are not uh, affected uh, almost at all, uh, maybe in the facility services or um, uh, slightly, um, but uh, but uh, otherwise not very much at all. So we we see this perhaps more as an opportunity than a threat. Mm -hmm. We can increase our prices to our clients, uh, but moderately because we don't want to uh, uh, overuse the situation. Uh, and then we have of course um, uh, cost inflation on on the wages for our employees, but that is. Uh, not due until next year. So, so we're not, uh, it's sort of a favorable situation for us, but we, we treat it uh, with uh, care. 
I think we, we saw it before it came. Uh, we came. Uh, we we, uh, we have some uh, companies importing from Asia and, and this uh, COVID um, freight process, uh, Suez Canal, uh, Channel, um, uh, re really hit us very early, actually, uh, mid 2000. Actually, we, we saw it increasing, but, but I think we, 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 have, have, we are having lower mar gross margins, so because we, we can't increase um, that much. Uh, but I think I think we we have um, so well made it quite good actually, uh, given given uh, the situation. Uh, what we try to do is to have to increase the stock of goods. Uh, so so we we have can perhaps hundred million more uh, or about balance sheet uh, in stock of goods uh, in order to, to to purchase the goods at the price a lower price level and perhaps. Uh, with increase, we can then also increase the prices, but not have the full hit immediately. And do you see this uh, going to uh, wander off a bit uh, throughout the year? I or? think it. I mean, it, it, this is this is a global uh, situation. I think it will take time. Uh, my perspective is more than 18 months ahead. Um, it, it's not a short one. Uh, it, it will be also hit by other sectors and and. Um, that is uh, that you don't see the immediate effect, but it's coming stepwise, um, th f third or fourth tier level. So I think it it will be um, 18, 24 months from now at least. Uh, that's my guidance. But but on the other hand, uh, the, the society and the Western world or the world itself has has uh, big challenges with the COVID and the Ukraine war, and we still manage quite well. So I think we should be quite optimistic in, in a way, actually, because it, it's, we, we have not seen the, those uh, issues since the war, Second World War. So I think it's, uh, we should be act actually be quite proud that we can keep it uh, in, a, in a quite good level in general, general terms. I think, Ulf, you are also a quite hit, I can, I can guess, but yeah, maybe. Yes, of course. This is the third year uh, working with logistic and sourcing products, two year of Corona. But of course, during Corona, we also had price increases because the, the global shortage. So it's the demand supply curve. Demand goes up, supply down, the price goes up. So we have been hit, but we also have like the former speakers increased our, our stock and made a big stock uh, purchasing to, to secure, uh, not to, to run short. But of course, we, it takes a lot of time uh, getting all the products and we are sourcing all over the world to, to be able to serve our customers. But, but so far, it's, uh, uh, we've been managing doing that good and we've also been, been good in mitigating the price increases. I have another question, actually. Uh, talking a lot about Swedish companies here, but you as an uh, uh, investor, what's the difference between no one in Sweden? And they ser serially acquires, yeah, yeah. Well, in Norway, we don't have anyone. No, <laughs> <laughs> we have one. Uh, yeah. I think. That well, why do you think it's that? I mean, it's a big difference, but it's you know we're so close. <laughs> we spent actually quite a significant amount of time trying to figure out whether there are some hidden gems in the Norwegian mm. market. And I think if you look on Norway, it's a very different capital market. Uh, it's a very commoditized. Uh, we came traditionally out of oil, you know, fishery and shipping and. Uh, it's just a different way of thinking, I think. it's a, We don't have the same industrial heritage as you have here in Sweden. We were a very poor country up until the 1970s. And the ones that have really you know, made a fortune have done so based on high, significantly higher risk models, uh, if you can put it that way. Um, there are a couple of companies on the Oslo Stock Exchange that resemble a typical serial acquirer model. But we also see that they're not able to have the same focus, particularly on capital allocation that we would prefer or in that you would see, you know, for the typical Swedish companies. So I think it's a it's a cultural thing very much. I have a question on the I mean, the, you mentioned PE, uh, you mm -hmm. as you have as you, as you have a background there. I was just th thinking that we have so many of these serial acquirers in, in Sweden now. How is how has the competition changed between PE firms trying to get hold of the of the companies that you're getting at now? How has that changed over the years? I think when I 
was in the PE, PE industry, there were some small cap funds or micro cap funds, uh, but, but uh, the asset management or the capital is so, um, uh, it's a big, big, right? So, so the smallest ticket can be perhaps 500 million sec. So, so those small country raised the funds uh, from these institutional investors. Uh, so what I have seen since mid uh, 2005 and, and to 15, I think, the one that were around growth capital and, and some small cap funds, uh, they're not there anymore. It's the serial acquirers on the stock exchange, actually. So, so, so I think we, it, it has moved to the industry that we are, are doing. Uh, so, so I think it's, it's, um, it's uh, but, but the, the recent perhaps year or two years, there have been a lot of newcomers into the I think Stock Week has been around for, for a while, and I, I had this uh, uh, the uh, 2012, so, so I, but it took some time because I had to, to show some track record and get some funding myself in order to start. And, and I think Storskogen started 12 or something. So I think it's, it's, um, it's a quite new phenomenon, uh, even though that, that uh, Berman and Beving and Lagerkrans has been around for, for a very long time. Uh, so, so I think it's, um, um, we have seen it. And, and there are more to come into the arena, I think. Maybe, maybe to tap on the words you mentioned, Ulf, that I guess, I mean, all of you buy, focus on buying mature companies that, that has been around and the supply maybe goes up quite, yeah, it, it takes some time. Uh, but as you said now, the demand has, has gone up. So how, how that, does that impact the, the multiples for these private companies? We can start with Ulf. Um. Well, uh, we 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 tend to um, like bilateral discussions and maybe not so much structured process. So of course the structured processes has uh, gone up a little bit in multiple. But if you have a bilateral dialogue, it's 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 around what it has been for a while. And your view, David? Maybe? Uh, well, I actually had a number in my presentation. We have been acquiring businesses at a multiple of 4.4 since uh, we started, and uh, that hasn't changed. The last nine companies uh, 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 is at uh, 4.3, actually. So uh, the price is, is not the most important thing for those uh, we do business with, and that is very interesting. Um, it is, of course, important, but it is not the most important thing. It's the fact that they want to sell the company to us. I agree. I'm, I'm, I've been around for 20 years in the in the first 15 years in private equity, and it was the same multiples at that time. So, and, it, and I think it is about uh, operational risk. Yeah. Uh, so, so you, they, they, even the stock exchange has gone up for for comparable uh, businesses for 15 years uh, horizon, but, but uh, still, it's operational risk. And it should be there, uh, I think, the multiples. They're not moving. Great. Thank you so much for being here today and, and presenting your companies and, uh, and for this uh, discussion. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.